good evening everybody once again and thank you for joining in this is the dialogue with lady raj and this evening we are discussing gender roles and gender stereotypes um like i said earlier kindly copy the link and share it to somebody so that they can join the conversation all right um so clubhouse has a new feature the chat room so when you look at the bottom of your screen the left side the first button is um the first icon where you see the chat sign there's a chat room now so if you have a contribution a question or something you can quickly type it there vera i see you thanks for joining so like always we we'll begin with a prayer father we thank you for tonight also and for how far you've brought us we ask that you come and teach us and gu guide us and direct us and let us leave here better than we came in jesus name amen all right so tonight um when i i started sharing the flyer people were asking me hey, why is it a debate no i want us all to know that this is not a debate about gender equality or the subject of submission or anything it's a discussion to see um from both genders perspectives all right now um i just want to establish something or some things before i introduce my guests for this evening okay so what is um what are gender roles gender roles are um how we are expected to speak according to your gender uh, as an as a male or female how you expected to act speak dress or conduct yourself based on your gender or your sex you know for example naturally or generally girls and women are expected to dress um typically in a very feminine way and women are are uh, assumed to be more polite and nurturing and all that and men we assume that men should be strong and aggressive and bold so that is that now when we talk about a stereotype it is a judgment okay unlike rules a stereotype is a widely accepted judgment or bias about a particular gender or people or a group and unfortunately stereotypes are not always accurate and sometimes these stereotypes can cause unfair and um unequal treatment because of the person's um, sex or gender when it comes to this when it comes to this angle then um it's called sexism so people who judge people by gender or treat people unfairly based on their gender are called sexist i hope you are getting the direction of the conversation now um let me go into the bible a little jesus by his teachings and actions he affirmed the worth and value of women as equals to men when we read the new testament we see various examples of women who were prophesying and teaching and serving in various capacities and if we go to galatians chapter 3 verse 28 it teaches that in christ there are no longer any gender distinctions and that both male and female are the same okay the passages that seem to indicate that men should have authority over women but these can be interpreted you know differently in their specific cultures and may not apply necessarily to us of the modern days okay so this discussion is more about um sexism that's the unequal and unfair treatment or judgment that we um give to people because of their gender so tonight my although my my guests are <laughs> a male and a female it doesn't mean that they are about to fight or 
they're about to have any sort of debate about this issue. No, we just want to hear from each other's perspective. You know, sometimes women assume certain things about men and men also. So this evening, we just want to talk about this whole thing and then get it over. And so um, I hope everybody can hear me. Sami, if, if there's a problem with my network or if you cannot hear me or something, please prompt me. Sure, sure, I will. It's okay, right? Sami, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Everything is fine. We can hear everything clearly. Here. All right. Okay, thank you. So joining me tonight, tonight we're going to break one of them gender stereotypes <laughs> when we when we say that uh, women or ladies first today i want to introduce the gentleman first so if you permit me um i have with us tonight edem havo he's a graduate from the university of ghana uh, he studied political science and then he served as a ta for a while he's currently a lecturer at St. Carol's School of Nursing. Um, it's a private nursing university or a private university here in Accra. So, Adam Havo, you are warmly welcome to the dialogue with Lady Raj. Thank you very much. Thank you for honoring my invitation. You're very welcome. And Adam, I've known him for a while and I've heard of a lot of um, um, <laughs> Uh, what's the name? Female, what's the name? Gender activist. But <laughs> he's one of the few men that I see strongly advocating for men all the time. Like, you know, always fighting for men and, you know, fighting for justice for men and all that. So I felt like there wouldn't be anyone better to deal with this situation than Edem. Okay, so the lady I have with me this evening is Augusta Asantua Boateng. She's a professionally trained journalist, a media communications practitioner, a diplomacy enthusiast, and a female gender advocate. She has a mini MBA in leadership skills and development. She's a founder and executive lead at She Media, a female concentrated media communications and advocacy company. Augusta's gender advocacy interest centers on women's representation and inclusion in leadership personal and career development, sexual and gender-based violence, and financial empowerment. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Ms. Augusta Boa. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank, thank, you for having thank you so much for, for honoring our invitation. All right, so um, who do I start with? Okay, Adam. Yes, please. What What were your first thoughts when I sent you the topic? What What came to mind? Well, I good evening once again to everybody here. Good evening. Um, my initial My initial thought was the fact that well, it's high time we put some of the conversation or this conversation in particular into the rightful perspective because i think over the years by virtue and please let me clarify something here a stereotype does is not necessarily a negative thing okay stereotyping okay. is not always negative so there can be positive forms of stereotyping so as i said sometimes this conversation has to be put in the right perspective such that at the end of the day the purpose and intent for which humans were created on earth be it male be it female and the complementary role the key word here is the complementary role that we play i love so, that yeah. i love that yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay okay thank you so augusta now to you what 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 were your initial thoughts when i sent this topic to you <laughs> okay so um I mean, when you called and you told me we are discussing this topic, I felt that um, it was in the right direction because um, as human beings and as Christians, 
we find ourselves in um, a society that has so much expectations for both genders and it's only prudence that we're able to have conversations around this topic to be able to identify uh, what we are to learn, what we are to unlearn and what we are to relearn to be able to cohabitate um, and have a peaceful and meaningful relationship as human beings. So yeah, it was, it was interesting and I'm glad that we're having the conversation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so um, this is how we are going to go. I will, in no particular order, I will let um, Augusta, I've called you Obaya for so long that it's so hard to call you Augusta. <laughs> Augusta is also Obaya. So, um, Obaya, I would like you to, you know, just set the ball rolling on what you have for us tonight. You can, you know, you start, start your presentation. But, Adam, along the way, if, if whilst Obaya is talking, if you have something to say about what she's saying, you can come in and then say it. Sure thing, sure thing. You don't, you don't necessarily, yeah, you don't necessarily have to wait for her to finish talking. Okay, um, okay, sure. We can come in at any point. And Obaya, same goes, goes for you. Okay, so over to you, Adam and Augusta. I'll come in as and when, though. <laughs> okay, so I'm supposed to start? Yes, but you hold on. Hold, hold on with your thoughts. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome once again to the Dialogue with Lady Raj. This evening, we are discussing gender roles and stereotypes. And if you just joined, then you are right on time. I would kindly ask that you copy the link and share it, send it to someone, let them join the conversation. Um, some, so a lot of us, especially in our side of this world, we have some strange um, biases or some funny way of thinking when it comes to men and women. So I would really love it for a lot more people to hear what we have to say this evening. So kindly share the link. Also, we have a chat box now. Um, so you can just type in your comments and you know join the conversation. <laughs> I'm seeing some comments here. <laughs> some people thought there was, there, there was going to be a war when they saw the panelists. <laughs> they thought there was going to be a fight, but no, please, there's no fight tonight. Just sharing our thoughts with one another. Thank you. Obaya, oh, over to you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, sorry. I went to check the chat and it's funny. Man. <laughs> okay, so um, gender roles and gender stereotyping, how it affects our behaviors as human beings, um, our self-esteem and uh, our relationships. So when I was doing my reading, I had to put my Bible beside me because we are in um, a Christian atmosphere, sort of, and try to find out what the Bible says about women and men and uh, gender roles. And I like the fact that you mentioned Galatians because I also have my Bible reference from Galatians chapter um, 3, verse 7, which says that, likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered i liked it until it got to women as the weaker vessel <laughs> and then quickly i remember that i had read genesis chapter um, 1 verse 27 and 28 which says that, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and all that, and have dominion. So I just started asking God questions that, God, in Genesis, you said that you created both, both of us in your image, and we are supposed to subdue the earth and multiply and have dominion. So what happened that in Galatians, all of a sudden, man is supposed to um, rule over the woman? I may not be um, a deep student of the Bible, but um, anytime I read the Bible, I have some 
kind of conflicting thoughts because in one breath it says this, in another breath it says another thing. And so I started asking questions that God, so you created woman in your image. And also along the line, God says that he created woman as the man's helper. Most of the times people twist this to suit their own um, motive, or maybe I'm also trying to suit it, uh, twist it to suit my motive, but- Maybe, the, just maybe. Yes, just maybe, because to me, when, when someone is a helper, I feel like the person is coming in to provide a need, something that I cannot ordinarily do on my own mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. this person is when this person is coming in the person is someone that i should reverence someone i should honor mm. someone i should respect and give the full attention to mm. because mm. the person coming in with a need that i cannot provide for myself or i cannot do for myself and so when god created woman to be a helpmate for a man then it, it makes me understand that women came in with so much power that God created that not just to come and compliment men or come and support them, but we also came in with our own unique power to contribute to the world that he himself had created. Exactly, exactly. We are, we are the support system. Yes, a support that needs to be respected and honored and reverenced in any way and not stereotyped. And not and not tagged in certain ways. And so, right from the Bible, I, I went to the um, biblical days and how women were um, um, seen or expected to behave in a certain way. And in 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 my reading, I realized that. Sorry, in my reading, I realized that. Um, men took up a lot of the decision-making processes. Men were the leaders. When you go to the synagogues, the churches, even in communities, men were the leaders making decisions. And women were the supporting variable, the supporting uh, uh, um, people who were not always given the chance to speak or were not given the chance to uh, be in certain public places. But then again, you read and you realize that women played huge roles in Jesus's ministry. Take Deborah, for example, she was a prophetess. Even in that system where women were subjugated, where women were told to behave in a certain way, to act in a certain way, there was Deborah. There were women that stood up and, and highlighted or showed their full feminine power in what God created them to become. And so these are women that did not let um, the gender roles or stereotypes then stop them from being women, stop them from doing what God had created them to become, stop them from showing their potentials and their leadership skills. So right from the, um, um, what do you call it? The biblical days to our generation, to our system now, in the olden days where women uh, um, um, are expected to behave in certain ways, Women were not made to um, vote in certain countries. Women were not made to even drive cars in certain, in certain countries because they saw these things to be manly or to be man's work or to be man's duty. These things run back into our family systems and how we are raised. Mm. And how every one of us come from a family system and it influences our mindset and our outlook about life. I'll take myself as an example. When I was growing up, even though there were things that we knew we're supposed to do as a girl child or as a boy child, there were no specifics as to you are supposed to do this like fixed, no. My brothers cook, we cook, everybody cleans. My dad, my late dad would cook and my mom will be sitting watching TV. The food will be ready and all of us will eat. There was nothing like uh, you're supposed to cook. And so that's your job. Wow. Daddy cooked. My dad can go to the market. And my dad used to cook one of the best meals. So one time I asked him, and so when he was growing up, 
his mother taught him. And so even at that time when the world was not um, too woke, quote unquote, we had family system that still understood um, the purpose of genders, that this is not a role for women. It is not fixed. Like we're not born with any special skill to come and cook or to come and clean. It's a life skill, <laughs> something basic mm. that everybody- It's a life skill. I like that. It's, it's a life skill. My so mama, anyone can learn it. Anyone can do it. It's, it's funny how when men are single, they know how to do all these things. I mean, they marry. Oh, no, I don't know how to cook. I've never done that before. Ah. But it was a survival for them. Yeah, when preaching. So now, my grandmother, who is now 105, at that time, I know, would not have known anything about gender roles or stereotypes, but made my, my dad learn how to cook. And that translated to how my dad also trained us in the home. And so with this mindset and perspective about life, when I'm looking out for someone to date or marry, it shouldn't be weird or awkward for me to look for someone who knows how to cook, someone who knows how to clean, someone who understands that these are basic skills that are not tied to one gender. Someone who understands that look, we are coming into this relationship, this marriage as partners, just as God wanted it from the creation story. When he said that both of you to, should subdue the earth and have dominion, God understood the essence and the purpose of partnership. Even though when, when the serpent came in and deceived Eve into eating the apple and God started punishing Adam and Eve. He said, no, oh no, now the man is going to rule over you, which was a punishment. Which also brings me to the fact that um, maybe, just maybe, Adam had some deficient in his leadership skills. Because then you were the man, God gave you the opportunity, the privilege to name the animals and all the other things he had created. So how come that you became quote unquote weak in the sense that a woman could tell you, oh, oh, this is the apple, the forbidden apple that I ate. Adam take and eat. And Adam did not ask questions as to what as for, as for that one, you know, you know it's a gift from God to us, how we can <laughs> seductively no, manipulate. No, so, that one then, is then, a topic so, for another day. So then it's, 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 well, it's a topic for another day. It brings a question mark on the leadership skills of Adam. But it's a topic for another day, so let's move on. <laughs> and then we, we, we come back to um, our society now, which is, which is now being influenced by education, by technology, by new media, by exposure, and even by economic changes. Now, the world is going in a way that women can no longer sit at home and play the gender roles that are expected of them. In this era, even men who are looking for women to date will not want someone that is idle. Exactly. Exactly. Something to the table, someone that's productive, a woman that's productive. It could necessarily, it could not necessarily be um, you putting up a business, but being productive even in the home. Because trust me, Raj, when we talk of domestic work, especially when children come into the picture, it's a whole lot of work for women. One person can do it alone. I am telling you, so children cleaning the home, it has a toll on the mental health and the physical health of the woman. And so uh, um, um, when, uh, when young people are coming together to marry, there are conversations that you need to have, conversations that are very, very critical to the relationship. Like you, you have to ask what feels normal for you. What, what background are you coming from? Are you coming from a background that sees gender stereotypes or gender roles as something that is so important? Like you need to do it. You are supposed to nurture. You are a natural, natural uh, uh, um, caregiver. You are supposed to do these things. Or you are coming from a background that is so liberal and understands that before you are the wife or the husband, you are a human being and have need and that you cannot do it all. And that this is not some um, 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 senior and this is not some senior and junior 
uh, uh, um, thing we are coming to do, it is a partnership. Even though in every union or partnership, there should be a leader. There should be the yes, elite. yes, and and I believe, and I believe that was because you know God hates disorder, so right. in um, order, yes, for things to be done in a particular way, so that there's no confusion and all that, He decided to put that order in place, so but, that um, yes. there's so so that there's there's that order, right, right, because they, you, they yes, but you can also agree with me that. Some people cherry pick the Bible to suit them. And a lot of men, oh, the Bible says that men are the head. But really, when you sit down and you assess yourself and your contribution or what you are doing to the woman, are you, are you, are you worthy of the headship or because it is, a, it's a, it is an entitlement that's given in the Bible? So you carry it with your shoulders high, but not putting any effort to be that leader that God had commissioned you to be. It puts a question there, but because it's in the Bible and we carry it everywhere we go, we are the head, the women are supposed to be submissive. Submission comes so easily and unprovokedly when things are done right by the leader or by the man, by the head of the home. Submission comes so easily. But you cannot assume, you cannot expect submission from a woman that you, you disrespect, that you dishonor, that you, that you verbally, emotionally blackmail or abuse. It wouldn't come and you wouldn't say that you're disrespectful because you are not also doing your part as a leader. You are not also doing your part as a leader. And also, um, I was before before we started. I was talking with someone, and the person said, "Oh, look at what I saw on social media. That um, um, show this to your girlfriend and see if she can pronounce them. I think yard, uh, buffet, uh, pneumonia, all those things. I, projecting that if your girlfriend is not able to pronounce these words well, then she's dumb or she's not smart." And a lot of the guys were laughing about it. And I, I felt that it was it was a disrespect to women. So I asked them, you that is going to show it to your girlfriend, can you pronounce them well? Mm. Can Especially you pronounce for the good. Well? But you think that um, uh, it's all right to shame women who cannot pronounce these words. And then one other thing that I find so problematic is when people say beauty with brains. I don't know how I, I feel so uncomfortable about it. <laughs> And that beauty with brains. Because then you're trying to say that there can be beauty without brains and there can be brains without beauty. No. I find it so problem. Right um, um, I, I think... Right, I feel there, there could uh -huh. have been a time allocation so that after she talks, then I come in because there'll be a whole lot of rebuttals and probably... Um, <laughs> and so, so I, I, I genuinely okay. believe that if you could have made something like a time allocation so that when she is done, then I come in, then if there are any like points okay, to okay. be used. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. In that case, Obaya, you have five minutes to round up for now. We'll okay, come back to you. Great, because I, I have not even entered the, my books yet. Okay, so, uh, okay, let me just touch on uh, some of the ro the gender roles and stereotypes that we have in our society and um the channels through which it comes i mean when when we are growing up we we assume that or we expect girls to like you said be feminine or act in a feminine way and men to act in a more masculine way even in when it comes to professional levels immediately you hear someone you hear a teacher or a nurse you assume that it is a woman when someone mentioned oh that's a pilot that's a doctor in your mind, it's a man or it's a male. And so these are some of the stereotypes or these are some of the, the, the expectations or the assumptions that we have for both genders. And also, uh, we know that when, when women, women are assumed to be sexier when they are all curvy with the flat tummies and um, all the right curves and everything. And so when, when women 
who genuinely may have gone through some kind of medical procedures or gone through some kind of trauma that had left them in um, a more plumbia um, size or something, feel they lose their self-respect or their self-confidence and tend to do, other, to do things that will correct their reality or correct their current situation to fit into the expected stereotype or expected uh, feature that society has for them. And these things, these things actually affect women. It affects women's mental health, it affects their self-esteem and their self-confidence. And then there are other, there, there, there's this thing that I have personally experienced before. That you walk in town and uh, someone calls you, you ignore, and then the next moment, oh, you're a prostitute, or we are shower, or shower, you call. A man can never go it's to a this. shame. He cannot experience this, not in any way. A woman cannot call a man, he will ignore him, the woman will call her that name. But it's a, it, women experience it. I have experienced it over and over. And so now a girl will go through that, and the next moment she feels down. So the next day she's working and someone calls, oh, before this other person calls me a prostitute, let me go and listen to him, or let me go and hear whatever he has to say. Then he has put in a position, or has put in that, in that stereotype, that, that prejudice, for you to also conform. Okay, Obai, I'll, I'll cut you here. And, you know, when, when it comes to gender roles, you know, somebody was asking me about it, like, why is it that um, when you come to the home, for instance, we expect that um, the woman should do this and do that, and the man should just go home and, and go out and just go and, you know, look for money to take care of the family. And I told the person that in my home, it's not like that. In my home, mm -hmm. I can't do anything. My husband can't do anything. What we believe is that the person who is stronger in an area should handle that area. Right. So, for instance, um, <laughs> between my husband and I, my husband is a better bargainer. So, if we are to, to if there's shopping to be done, <laughs> my husband would do it any day because I'm not good at bargaining. I will end up using uh, more money. So he will rather do the shopping. And it's the reverse in a lot of other homes. But I mean, that's just how it works for us because we've realized that this is his strength. So, I mean, he'll do that. When we had our first child, we we're living alone, just the two of us. We're, I mean, we're, we're washing, when we got married at first, we we're washing together. Then we didn't have a washing machine. We we're doing hand washing and we used to wash together. When we had our first child, my husband would wash his, uh, the baby's stuff. He would iron. So um, I, I just need all of us to understand that we shouldn't put ourselves or um, the offset sex in any kind of box um, expecting us to behave in a particular way or do particular things because it's a woman's job or it's a man's job. Do what works for you as a family, especially when it comes to the home. Do what works for you as a couple. Do what works for you as a family. And I believe that um, for men who have not trained themselves or um, who for a, one reason or the other, their um, parents or mothers excluded them in um, housework and all that, I think that they should use the time of their singlehood to learn certain things. Otherwise, it puts a lot of pressure on the yeah. woman. Yes. Yeah. And also for the women who have also lived their lives um, depending on their parents and depending on other people to cater for them. I think that women should also work for themselves yeah. and, and, right. and have their own money. Yes. So that right. they can support the family. So that right. it doesn't look as if... Because that's when... Um, because it's like you're not bringing anything to the table so i mean right. that's what i have to say for now but you know right. let's go to Eden. right i'm coming please Obaya, just, i will just come back before. to you please okay 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 a minute he said so a minute no no, no it's, it's just about just what you said that um you and your husband okay. understand, understand and uh you are operating in an agreed uh, uh family system but we have, because, I'm sure because of your exposure, your education, 
and um, knowledge that you have about life. But we have men who are typical traditional men who are still so inclined to this patriarchal world. They will not. Yes, and there, and there are women who are also that way. Exactly. And, and I hope you, you agree, know, yes. Do you know that um, I have, I know someone who buys things for her children and tells them, oh, is that it? I bought it. Okay. Anytime she buys things. And to me, I think it's to be an error because then the child will grow up thinking that everything that, like a man should buy everything. A man is supposed to do everything. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah. That you can buy something and you let your child know that I bought it, not to demean your husband, but let them understand yes, that yes. a man can buy a woman. I can get buy. it. And and in and in the woman's mind, she thinks that she's covering her husband's exactly. naked. Exactly. Uh -huh, exactly. Aha, in quotes. But it, exactly. it you know, it, it makes the children grow up with a certain kind of mentality. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Let, let's just skip. Let's just skip and go to Eden. But before then, I want to read a few comments. Okay. So um uh where 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 do i start from mamiofa mamiofa is giving you fans so she says it's the brothel for me <laughs> girl slang what's it uh cleaning cooking and cleaning brothers day here that's my own husband michael yabua <laughs> abishai says the love cooker serve day here and he's calling sammy abishai says hard decisions are for men and sensible decisions are for women. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree with you. Okay, Sarah Pinting says, equity is what I believe we should fight for. If there's anything we want to fight for and not equality. If we are going to go according to the word of God, there's no day that we women will be equal to men. And I agree with it because I recently saw a post and I, I mean, I it kind of brought a lot of thoughts into my mind. Like, we are beginning to lose the essence of our femininity. We are, we are, we are unique. Okay, each gender is unique in their own way. But when we try to fight to be equals with men, I mean, it doesn't work because we are not. Neither are the men equal to us. So Sarah Penten also says that we are not equal. God did not create us equal. Let us know our place and understand our roles as men or women, respectively, and live according accordingly because we are not equal okay so um adam you have the floor now okay um thank you very much now before i start my submission since mm -hmm. we are premising this on the bible i would like okay. us to look at a scripture okay, okay. that is second timothy three sixteen. okay that will be the foundation from which i build and 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Preach it. Okay. 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay. Please, I hope you've all gotten it. Yeah, we have. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Now, 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly finished unto all good works. Now, this is what I am going to premise my conversation on. And the fact that if this is in the scripture, and as such, it is giving us the hint that everything we have in the Bible as we believe it is inspired by God, then it means that the verse that says that treats women as unto weaker vessels is inspired by God. You see, we are not supposed to take it on the face value of what it says because there is always the letter and there is always the spirit. Now, if we are saying that we are going to take it word for word verbatim, then there are so many things we would there are so many things we would endorse and so many things we would not tolerate in the name of either mm. theocracy or in the name mm. of democracy. Now, mm. to the extent that first and foremost in the Bible, when God gave the punishment, he gave Adam a different punishment and he gave Eve a different punishment. If we, are, if we wanted to talk about equality from there, then it means he should have given both of them the same punishment. But to the extent that he did not tell the woman to tell the land or he did not tell the man that on your belly you shall crawl speaks to, uh, speaks to differences right from there. The point that modern 
generation i don't want to use the word feminist but proponent of the feminism or equality theory is the fact that men and women is the are english equal. for me it's the english for me good the, now the point is that men and women are not equal biologically we are not equal we the equity can reign equity then is what we should look out for because no man or other things being equal will be in the labor world and is going to push exactly all because you don't have a woman, woman. that's the thing you good. don't have a no woman. woman no woman is also going to produce semen or sperm exactly now, once we get this fundamental difference straight we are not going to suffer in this life you see we are misconstruing sex and gender we are misconstruing these two things and actually because the bible verses came in that's why i had to um, redesign the nature of my presentation but we should understand that gender and sex are independent the fact that um, we ascribe certain gender to a particular sex does not necessarily mean that the other sex cannot partake in the roles of the other gender or so for example you have men who are chefs so if you are yeah, telling me that yeah, men yeah, are saying yeah. that uh, women are supposed to be cooking well there are men who are chefs and are actually very good cooks are you saying that then they are they are trying to go against society no okay but you see it takes i i, I don't I, think I, I don't think that was her point though but you continue no, no, i don't no, think I'm that, not was, her that point. was her point no 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 no. i'm not saying that was her point i'm saying that that is what okay. m- uh, people have come to accept i'm not saying okay 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 no, okay no, 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 no. okay i'm just addressing i'm not addressing i'm addressing the topic in general okay, okay. okay. and i mentioned okay. earlier and i mentioned earlier that stereotypes are not necessarily negative stereotyping is not really neg- it is when the bias comes in that is when you can have some form of stereotyping which then we tend to say okay then it becomes negative it becomes negative it becomes negative because for example in ghana if we want to look at the tribal stereotyping for example they'll tell you oh errors are like this guns are like that fantasies are like this in all of this there are positives so for example they'll tell you that oh errors um they like to learn Asantes like to go yeah. to um they are very good businessmen northerners are mm-hmm, very industrial mm-hmm. fantasies very good because okay mm-hmm. all these things are forms of stereotype it doesn't mean that there are no fantasies who are very good or... okay it doesn't mean that there are elves who don't know how to cook it doesn't also mean there aren't northerners in fact in ghana the northern region and um, there is a particular town whereby the most phd candidates in this country come from the north but if we were to believe in the stereotype that um, northerners are only meant for us to wear hard work and not further education we will be doing ourselves a great disservice now back to the issue of gender roles and stereotype you see the the name gender the topic in itself you see gender in itself connotes a role gender in itself connotes a role that is why if we see and you see by virtue of our socialization first of all as africans okay it has done some form of service and some form of disservice the service it has done is that it has made men who are properly trained to appreciate the role of women okay albeit some men who have actually gone out of their way to abuse the system hence the patriarchy and as such the team like they try to boss the system and then ladies have become timid to the extent that they accept what is it doesn't mean that should be the case what is and what should be in usually in gender are not always the same but for the purpose of the discussion we are having if we say we want to fight for gender equality no i would opt that because you see men and women have their own uniqueness and the unique case here is the fact that there are ways women can handle situations that men would ne- it would never even occur to men because even in our various forms of relationships someone will tell you that hey me i'm emotional me this men and then they also expect men to ask it to be emotional no men would rather be logic and then try to deduce it doesn't mean women are not logical i think <laughs> i think what you are saying is actually even one of the stereotypes because i was going to get to that that um, no. we 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 generally we generally assume that a man should be you know um 
what's the name i don't know what, what word to use rigid and you know strong mm-hmm. and you know whatever but men is mm-hmm. so 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 it makes it difficult for men to be vulnerable it makes yeah. it difficult for a man to cry because in our, our country society because the man soon and then something mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. eating the man up and he cannot mm-hmm. really express his emotions because of that mm-hmm. you know so even yeah. growing yeah. up um um can kind of say we are in school and they are caning the girls and the boys and the girls are it's okay for the girls to cry but the, the mm-hmm. guys cannot cry so exactly maybe exactly. a boy is being abused but because of that thinking, he cannot even mm-hmm. express himself and then mm-hmm. he grows up and then this person will definitely uh in quotes not be a normal person not that he'll be abnormal or mad but, but a man is not allowed to be vulnerable a man a man is not allowed to be vulnerable meanwhile what by virtue of being humans it is in your right to be vulnerable but you see that is where yes. i see that if we want to deal with sex we have to deal with it differently and then we deal with the gender differently because you see the gender is the rule so then it could be that for example the first person who said women should cook then the woman before that person was the, the, the woman doing okay before okay. it became law or it became accepted what were those before them doing okay that is why i am saying that as men we have also tried to write on sometimes this patriarchy system to subdue women but i feel that that should not be the case and women in their bed to also try and overshadow or try to break the stereotype or break the glass and ceiling, completely them even find themselves in more trouble than us we usually see this example yeah. whereby we yeah. see people say hey, uh, the champion of a uh, feminist whatever whatever is got married and stuff like that and i mean yeah, we so make all these jokes <laughs> good and stuff as like if, that okay as if good, it's a bad point, thing exactly as if it is a bad thing to give birth because i recall the the there is there is no bigger feminist in this Ghana than Gifty Auntie. When she was in her prime, a man come or the host of a man come. When it comes to women issue, championing women's issue, men, this men that today she calls herself or he or so something. And then when she yeah. gave birth, people were like, "Hey, so you were the same woman who years ago you used to castigate men, do this, do that, do that, and now we are near." You see, so forget <laughs> the did, fact that forget didn't castigate it. men. You see, and, yeah, you see, and I think that that's where we need to be clear. All right, exactly. the fact that somebody for 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 some for somebody like Obaya, I know that when Obaya gets married, people will, will make those comments that hey, were well, you not the one? <laughs> but the fact that someone speaks up or um, is trying what simply Gifty Auntie was trying to do or that's and exactly what Obaya is doing is that they are just trying to fight for um or for want of a better word fight for we are, we are fight not against the right. stereotypes we are not, we are not you know, disputing fight against the stereotypes we are where not, you see, we are um, not disputing against fighting stereotypes at all i am i am not even i am for it but i'm saying that all these things should be taught in the right perspective but ultimately also in righteousness because you see at the end of the day the same bible that we submit to is saying that in ephesians 5 22 that wives submit to your own husbands as to the lord so it means that if you are a wife i am not even talking to them i'm talking about wives that submit to your husbands as to the lord what it then must imply is that if you were married to the lord how would you behave if you were married to the lord you see and this is where some men have also thrived on to um downgrade or downplay the role of women because after all i am the head i am the head i am the head no there is also a call on us men to also do better but if we are to go by what should be then it means that wives should submit to their husbands and it says that husbands love your wives as christ loved the church right from here we we are not even seeing equality we are seeing equity because god didn't tell women to love their husbands and god didn't yeah. tell the husbands to submit to their wives no he gave all of them actually and if, mm-hmm. actually the scripture before the verse before um mm-hmm. the, the verse right. 21 yeah yes you see it's it says to and that one was addressing believers in general mm-hmm. submit yourselves mm-hmm. one to another in the fear of god so there's the place where 
Yes, God there's a place to where. A role. Yes, where we, we submit ourselves to each role. other. And then it came to the next verse where it instructed the wives to submit to their husbands. Good. Oh, I am, I but am I, not this, Yes, please. So, as I was okay, saying. You, okay, you go ahead. But aside everything, okay, we are saying that first and foremost that now, if, even in the same Bible, Proverbs 18 22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. You see, if we, if we want to be sexist or racist or whatever, we'll say, why doesn't the Bible also say, um, she who findeth a husband? Okay, if mm-hmm. we want to deal with it on an equality basis, then it means that as men, we would also say, okay, no, since women, you say you want to be equal to men, okay? Now you to go out and find the husband, provide for the husband, and let the husband play the role of a wife. You see, but you see, the Bible is clear. And by, you see, modernity should not come as a means of challenging um, what is, okay? It is a way of even complimenting or building on because as I said, we are all unique in our own ways. And once we appreciate our uniqueness and work to ensure that we are complimenting each other, because you see, you, um, she, uh, Mubaya made a statement earlier that Bible uh, when the Lord said uh, it's not good for man to be alone, so he made him a helper and then to support. The point here is that you are supporting who for what? So that means that if you are there to support, first of all, there is a goal to be achieved. If there is a goal to be achieved, what is the goal? Then what is your role? Okay, so if this is how it is going to be, or this is what should be the case, then women should, first of all, if you understand that you are in a supporting Role, understand what goes with supporting a person and what makes you also worth supporting because you see we are there are a lot of women who are coming out to feel entitled i mean it goes both ways there are some men who are also feeling entitled because i am the man this has to be done for me automatically no and some women also because i am a woman this has to be done for me no you see that is why i said by virtue of if we want to go according to equality it won't happen but if we are talking about equity equity is where we can all find our feet have our own ensure that the complementary nature for which we were made on this because no woman can give birth on her own all other things being equal no man can bring children into this world on his own all other things being equal so the point here is that there that means that there is supposed to be a collaboration or a partnership or an agreement between the two. So if that is the case, what are the rights and responsibilities of the partnership? And what is my role? What is your role? And what is the ultimate goal? If we establish these foundations, we won't have a problem at all. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, if you just joined and or if you joined no long ago, this is the dialogue with Lady Raj. And tonight I have Augusta Boating and Edem have where we are discussing gender roles and stereotypes. Okay, so both of you have made your points and although we are saying different things, we are saying the same thing. <laughs> I don't know if if that makes sense at all. Now, what what the reason um I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit inspired me to bring this topic up is the, the question that I put out when I sent the flyer around, what are the effects of some of these negative stereotypes, gender stereotypes, and on people's self-esteem and people's behaviors and people's um, relationships? What are some of the effects that um, stereotyping can, can have on people's self-esteem, especially, and the way they behave and the way they they uh relates to other people so the two of you it goes to both of you but but somebody just sent me a message adam it's a question for you the person is asking that there are gender roles that are destructive Mm -hmm. there are literally i'll choose the question again do you dispute that fact that the person is asking if you dispute the fact that there are den- gender roles that are destructive. Destructive. I, destructive. D-E-S. Destructive. That destroy. Um, I think it would be subjective. I think it would be subjective. A role that may destroy one person in a, a particular context 
might uplift someone in a different context. So I think it is context specific. It might not be a one side fits all. Okay, okay. So so the person who sent the message kindly come back with maybe a follow up or something. But now I want us to look at the effect of gender stereotyping on um, the self esteem of people, both men and women, and the on the the other side to the effect it can have on the way people behave. So um, yeah, can we can we talk about that? Can we go there? Okay, okay sure. Um, would Augusta like to start so I can take the floor? As you as you've unmuted yourself, you start. <laughs> okay. okay, good. Now, now, as I said earlier, and once again, that to, to the extent that now we are dealing with the negative aspect of the stereotype. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you. But Adam has started, so please let him go on and then you can come in, please. Thank you. Okay, so please, as I was saying now, ultimately, there is there is bound to be abuse of any system, any rule, any law, anywhere, okay? Gender roles are not excluded. So even right from childhood, when um, even children are playing certain games and you have a boy wanting to cook wanting to do this they'll say debbie 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 muko diagro and then the ladies will be the ones with the mini dolls and stuff playing so yeah. on mm -hmm. it forms an unconscious that's why i said that the um the agent of socialization which is the first agent of socialization which is the family has a direct or indirect role to play here in all they play a role in ensuring the or propagating the negative aspect of the stereotype i believe now, i have, believe the family plays yeah, a major role a very critical, a major role, role. A very critical role. role yeah because that is the first age. and mind you you see and this is the problem the first agent of socialization here okay is the family and this family is made up of both male and females okay so if we are saying that it is the same family that's mostly or sometimes or usually propagates this stereotyping then we are talking about the fact that then women are actually or we can infer that both men and women and women here also carry on or believe in the propagation of this stereotype because right from start if men are supposed to carry out certain rules hey no leave it for your sister hey no leave it for your brother with the exception mm -hmm. of schooling with the exception of schooling and even sometimes as you go along there are some courses people as you all yeah, know this yeah, is for men, for men. but we have yeah. women but we have women who have broken those glass ceilings and have shown that women can also do it and have served as wonderful examples and as such can be good as but the point back to the issue of the negative aspect i think what it does is sometimes if the children are not raised in righteousness that is where they tend to go astray because then they grow up with the entitlement that a woman must do everything for them the negative too is that it is also done for the woman i know a man must do everything for you i.e he has to provide he has to go out and hustle everything that every economic decision and responsibility and whatever and you are supposed to do the domestic so he does the non-domestic you do the domestic there are times when this and even lady right i won't dispute you I, uh, when you um, gave birth, I would want to assume that it is your mother or your mother-in-law who played a role even helping you take care of you and even the baby than the father's-in-law. Yes, that's true. Good. And this is, if we want, this is also a stereotype because after all, fathers or men don't take care of babies or infants at that stage. But sometimes it would <laughs> interest you to know that the women find joy in doing it because that is what they are called to do so you can't then expect a man by virtue of wanting equality that okay since your since it is your daughter who are also giving birth then you to go there wash her bath her take care of her. i mean by virtue of the biological makeup it won't be feasible so then why then are we now fighting for equality no you see it is equity i will stand on this equity mountain also because if we get to appreciate the positives or the goal or the role for which equity 
is we would understand that this gender equality we are fighting for it is it is you can no gender can win from the start because we can't be equal and to the extent that this family that we talk about that is the first agent of socialization made up of both men and women who consciously you know i'm so glad i'm so glad i'm so glad that you said that no gender can win the equality because sometimes men make it yeah because sometimes the men make it sound as if it is the women that are fighting to be equal but sometimes you also try to um break into know, certain barriers that to break, to yes women dominate. Good. But, but yes but as i said good good so that's why i said no gender will win i am not excluding my gender because there are certain things i know women are gifted for and the, and in the same way women should also appreciate that men are also gifted for certain things but as back to the stereotyping and the negative effects as i said it makes both it makes both the male and the female growing up grow up with first of all a sense of entitlement the entitlement that when it gets to certain responsibilities it is for the opposite sex and in the same way when it gets to the woman to know for this is them but if all of, I, for all those who were, were in same sex schools and stuff they're cleaning the scrubbing it was the men who did it by virtue of the kind of socialization we got over there and even in the mixed schools or in the senior high or higher institutions of learning your own room your you are responsible for it Okay, that is where you get to see those who have been properly, the key word here is properly socialized or trained, and those who haven't or those who expect it to be done for them. Please, I'll pause here for now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I, you know, growing up, we all didn't know that um, this was an issue. A lot of us didn't know that. The, this gender stereotyping was an issue. We actually thought it was normal. That I mean, I remember that um, about three or four years ago, my mother, of lizard memory, <laughs> she she made a comment. She said, "Ah, I think I've made a mistake. Oh, I didn't teach my sons how to cook." And she was making reference because I think my brother attempted something. Or something, you know, all those times growing up together, she would expect we, the females, to uh, do the housework and all the cooking. And, you know, she wouldn't really bother the guys because she felt like we needed to learn. So these things, like you said, it makes the men grow up. And if they, they don't train themselves as individuals, then they grow up being expectant or, like you said, entitled feeling that it is the responsibility of a woman to cook for me. Yes, your wife will cook for you. But it's okay if you also cook for your wife. There's nothing wrong if you can also cook for your wife. Your house, so if if your wife travels for, uh, what's the name, for a while because of work or something, are you going to leave the house untidy till she comes back? My husband will never do that. Even sometimes while I'm at home with him, he sees something that needs to be done. And he doesn't necessarily call me and say, hey, 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 Raj, this place is dirty, or hey, Raj, this thing is going wrong, or Dianis is so eshi, kodumno, when he's just around the corner. He'll just handle it. So I believe that one of the main negative effects of this thing is that it makes people feel entitled. Another thing is that I feel that it's, affects the um, emotional, um, do I say stability, or emotional health and mental health of both genders. Me, this vulnerability thing is very important to me. We need to get to a place where um, men feel comfortable airing their weaknesses without being seen as a weak person. Anyway, let me hand over to Obaya now. Obaya, please give us your thoughts on the effect of the stereotyping. Hello. 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 Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We are here. You can hear me. Yes, okay. please. We can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that was an interesting submission for Madam. And the uh, fact that he was hammering on the equality, equality. And I'm wondering, 
uh, what it is. Anyway, uh, back to, I mean, when he was talking, he made mention of the fact that men are chefs. And we have very, I mean, most of the hotels or the event places that we have in the country have men as chefs. Rarely will you see a, a female chef. Because these men, hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Augusta, we can hear you, please. Yeah, we can hear you, we can hear you. Obaya, can you hear us? Mute yourself and unmute again. Can hear if you can hear us, please check your network. Okay, so while we wait for her to come of back, I okay. Obaya. Of course. Yes. Uh huh. Am you I went off for a while. Yeah, you went off it's for a while. Network. It's my network. Forgive me. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so can you hear me now? Yes, please. Yes, please, we can. I don't even know where I got to. So, I mean, a lot of the things we are saying, like Raj said, we are seeing the same thing, but from different perspectives. And the uh, issue of men uh, perceived as being vulnerable uh, when they cry or when they show emotions, and so they will tend to bottle up these emotions and act manly. It's also a cause to worry. Because when we talk of these gender stereotypes, like Adam said, we have the positive and negative. It actually affects us in a way that we, we can't even imagine. And these are things that are deeply rooted, things that will not change today or tomorrow. As hard as we try, we, we can have these conversations every now and then to change mindsets. But these are things that are deeply rooted. A typical um, man in a traditional setting will not in any way cook for the wife because it will it will look to him as being um, 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 lowering his guard let me put it in that way i remember i was i was in a fellowship with some other international um people and i was the leader of the group and we were supposed to submit a, a proposal i gave out work to each other and this man from the northern region of ghana did not do the work. So I called him, asked him why, asked him for reasons why he couldn't do the work. And he told me that he cannot have a woman give instructions to him. That is not how he was brought up. In this 21st century? In the, it was last year, 2021. Where, where women told, are CEOs? Yeah, he told me he <laughs> cannot, in plain English, that he, and the, right. he left the fellowship. He left the fellowship. This is an internationally recognized fellowship. He left because he cannot stand a woman giving him instructions. And it was it was disheartening for me because that's, that's I very knew, pathetic. Very pathetic. Yes, I I knew what this guy could do, and I knew what this fellowship can actually take him. But because of the stereotype, he cannot stand it, and so he'd rather leave. He would rather um, forgo the benefit or the major thing that will happen for him because of this territory he has to take instructions from a woman <laughs> exactly wow. and 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 it's it's quite sad that these stereotypes like adam mentioned it is not a straight jacket women are perpetrators of this stereotypes yes yes women are gatekeepers of patriarchy women you 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 see a woman raised to a certain level and the fellow women will be the ones Bickering and 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 shaming, That's shaming true. her. Yeah, you you will get women calling other women bossy because they are leaders. And so, when we talk of these gender stereotypes and roles, it is not men pitting against women or vice versa. It is the society we find ourselves, which is made up of both men and women. And so, when we say that we are we are living beyond these roles and 
uh, stereotypes. It is not to say that one gender is, the, is better than the other or we want equality because really men cannot do what women can do and women cannot do what men can do in certain capacities. That's when, when I started talking, I said that when God created woman, he created woman to come in with their own unique capabilities in their, in their own capacity to be a supporting factor to the man but also in their own right, in their own, in their own right, in their own capabilities that God had given to her. And so she's coming in as a support thing. Hello. Hello, can anyone hear me? My yeah, Baya, we can hear you. When, yeah, it was breaking, but we can hear you. It's my network. We can hear you. Great, yeah, we great. Can hear you. And so... Yes, so back to the effect that um, um, the, these roles and stereotypes have on women, I would say that it, it has made a lot of people in this, in this context, I will use women because that's my reality. Women tend to stay low ball or low key when it comes to what they can do. Because you go to um, board meetings and a woman starts talking and no, 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 no. I mean, they will not even take your submissions. It has happened to me. It has happened to a, a, a woman boss that I worked for. They will not take your submissions because men make the decisions. Men, someone posted men make the hard decisions. And so women cannot. So if you're a woman and you have the capability or the ability to come with proper structured policies or, or something that can benefit all of us as a society, it cannot be taken seriously because you were a woman. And so women tend to stay low key. A woman can achieve so much or a woman can do so much, but will tend to keep it to herself because of what society will target, because of what society will say about her. And then we have this um, assumption that um, women who have standards will end up, when it comes to relationships, will end up being single or will end up not marrying. And you see jokes flying around that, oh, you are in your 20s or 30s and you are being picky about men. You will get your mm -hmm. 50s and you're now sitting in churches and praying to God for a husband. A woman can have a standard. It doesn't necessarily mean that she, she doesn't want. No, this is who I want. A man that can understand me, a man that doesn't have this patriarchal mindset, this traditional mindset that, these are rules that you're supposed to do and it is fixed and this is what you're supposed to do. But a man like Raj and your husband, a, a man like a husband who understands that I am good in this area and so I'm going to do I'm going to do the bargaining. So my wife needs to sit aside and allow me to do this. And when it comes to you, Raj, there's a, a capacity that you can also work in effectively. He allows you to do it. And so if, if a woman decide that this is the qualities that I want in a man, this is the standard that I want. It shouldn't be something that is seen as an error. Or um, the, the black male women to thinking that uh, success is gendered, which is, which is also an error. You see that, um, I, I, I wouldn't use struggling, uh, a man trying to find his feet will propose to a lady, um, the lady will reject it, and you will see people emotionally blackmailing him that, oh, you, you don't accept him now and see in five years time, he'll be successful and then you will regret not marrying him. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm wondering, sex, God did not give success to one gender. A woman can not say no to a man and go ahead and be successful on her own. Exactly. We, we do not need to emotionally blackmail women settling with men. You It will surprise you that some women will end up settling with these men. And fortunately for some of them, the men will move beyond their current state, be successful, and still stay with these men, stay faithful to them. And there are others that will leave the women when they get to a point that they feel like, oh, no, I've gotten to a point that I need someone else. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, okay, so I've got, I've got both of you. Um, I I was looking at um, thinking that you both would talk about um, the way stereotypes affect people 
like the way they behave. For instance, when um, women are supposed to dress in a particular way, I remember even in SS, um, for the females who like to dress a little masculine, people would immediately assume that they were lesbians. Like for females who used to like wearing um, maybe shorts a lot and all that, even in these days, uh, females who like wearing um, all the time. How do you say? Oversized, more oversized clothes and more exactly. um, masculine clothes. We quickly assume that, hey, why is a person uh, a lesbian? And oh, for men who even maybe. Now. Even now. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. When some of yes. Come to you and you say, no, they'll tell you, are you a lesbian? I have had. Why are you a lesbian? Yes. yes. And, and, that's and that's you know. If a man, if a man w w likes to wear maybe the color pink, then questions is, yeah, is and bear man so so there, what are you doing with color pink? pink? But exactly. we need to understand that we are individuals with individual differences and preferences. Okay, yeah, so and, we and shouldn't actually limit, limit our our capabilities and our our uniqueness as human beings. Yes. They limit us and then make people, can like you know, crawl into their not, shell. Nothing wrong with it. Exactly, oh, like then. I mentioned, and then it brings about it brings about the the issue of. I am here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, we should be rounding up now. Um, if you have anything, any contribution or question, you can type it in the chat box and I will read it out. Okay, but Lady Raj, I have like just um, a brief something. Okay. Then I, okay. I now, it's, it's, it's two-sided now. Hello. With the... With the... Your buyer, we can hear you. Adam is speaking now. Let 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 her um, let him finish and then you give your last point and then we can close. Awesome, Ben. I didn't mean. Okay. Okay. Thank you speak. very much. Okay. Thank you. Now I think when it comes to this um, gender role stereotype and everything, sometimes okay, or most of the time, when ladies are about to get married start families it would interest you to know that the advice that they are given about submission how to go mostly comes from women they mostly come from women and it is this woman who then propagates the idea of oh uh, when you go whatever happens you stay you never know men are this men are that so sometimes it also comes from the nature of advice women give or the older women give to younger women because most of the time they advise them out of their experience and not necessarily what should be hmm. so sometimes this woman also grew up accepting what my mom grandma aunties have been through and have told me as what is or what meanwhile that should not be the case so sometimes even women themselves are guilty of this and men too oh yes because, i agree i agree yeah and then men too then advise okay now that you are the man of the house do this do that no you see the purpose of bringing to light the role of the various sexes and the, this gender and all that is to first of all let us appreciate the effort both sexes and um, put into whatever they do okay such that if you are a man and we now tend to bring out what women go through the challenges they face first and foremost once you appreciate this and you see and you also get to bear with them then you also get to know how you can be a better person to help that is the ultimate aim of any gen or that should be the ultimate aim of any gender discussion whatever the ultimate aim is to ensure how can i provide a better environment for the opposite sex and vice versa because then it is only then that we can achieve so because 
all other things being equal all other things being equal and pardon me here men pardon me here don't menstruate and as such we won't have cramps we won't have this we won't have that but by virtue of your biological makeup you would have that mm -hmm. So if getting to a time where there is some serious business that should be done and it is that time of the month for you, are you going to say that by virtue of the fact that you are the only one or because women empowerment and stuff like that, so business must not go on? No, even you won't agree. So that's why I'm saying that by virtue of this uniqueness, and this is not something uh, you can uh, As for that, that um, example, I'll not allow you to give it. Okay, no, no. Because... because no, I mean, okay, I, I, I can quickly... Take it back because, as I said, I knew I was trading on very cautious step, but I was just wanted uh -huh. to make a point that by virtue okay. of your biological makeup. Because, by, because okay, you see, the, let the, me use child birth. Please, I want to use child birth. Okay, please, can I use child birth? The, the unfortunate thing is that some women also leverage on these things. Okay, use it as oh, an excuse. I would have come to that. I would have come to that. I would have come uh -huh. to that. That there is but also the it shouldn't be an excuse. Whereby, Good. Uh -huh. no, it I was shouldn't be an excuse. I was going to um I was going to break the conversation down equally to let Great. you know that in as much as it is a genuine thing that happens, some women also leverage on that to say, and eh, then they take leaves of this. Oh, it's not me, it's this is that and because we are not in you to and to feel what you are feeling, then we as you so then people take advantage of that system. So that's what I'm saying that ultimately the purpose of of any gendered conversation or discussion should be geared toward first of all appreciating both sides understanding what they go through and ultimately ensuring that what can we do to make it a better place or become better towards them that is all okay thank you adam obaya please give your closing um remarks and then let's sum up i'll read some comments um kindly for our listeners if you have any questions or contributions, you can type them in the chat box or you can lift your hand in the next um, 10 minutes. We should be getting out of here. So, okay. that's that. Please, please. Oba, please, audible? you have two minutes. Am yes, we can hear you. You have two minutes. Okay. You have two minutes. Okay. This two minutes, you are, you're hammering on it. Adam, um, that's the more reason why to, to to your submission that women menstruate and that they need uh, work should go on and uh it shouldn't affect productivity i mean that's that's an amazing point but menstruation happens to women in different ways and i so mentioned that that, why... that example i, mean, I said no, i mentioned that example it. was very cautious okay. so i was quickly quick to okay retract so i'm just saying it, that I... i'm just that. I'm just saying that that's why it's important that we have uh, gender sensitive and gender responsive models in, in, in our settings, in companies or wherever we find ourselves. I mean, there are some women who menstruate and it is wild for days. This woman can come to work and not be productive. So she might as well just stay in the, in, in the home. And so when these models are put in place, they, they are, it's being sensitive and responsive to the peculiar changes that we have as women and men. I just wanted to uh, put that in. So Raj, our final right. comment Thank I'm you. going to make, final comment I'm going to make is that these gender roles and stereotypes affect both men and women in our own unique ways. And I, I, when I was doing my reading, I realized that the, the gendered uh, um, stereotype that we have is the root why men are substantially more likely to commit suicide because there's a lot of expectation a lot of burden on them as the breadwinner and so they have to do everything by all means to provide it puts a lot of toll on them and then women also go through um, these stereotypes and affect them as well ways um hello yeah, so that's how we can hear you. Augusta is having network issues. Can you hear me? Wow. Okay. I was hoping she could wrap up then. 
Okay. Um, I am okay. just yeah. the whole okay. Please, please, please. Okay, okay, Agatha. Okay, no, no, am I back? Oh, Jesus, Christ. yes, you are back. Yes, please, you are. Okay, you back. okay, so all that I'm saying from this conversation that we've had today, I hope that it will not end here and that uh, we also will be conscious in ways that we expect men and women to behave, that we will not unconsciously or consciously um project our stereotypes the negative ones on people because then we'll come back to this same conversation as time goes on and so with what we've learned here today let's project the conversations in our own spaces and consciously make the effort uh to understand that women and where women and men come in different ways and in unique ways and as such must be allowed to operate in ways that makes them comfortable and not put them in a box that will limit their potentials or their given talent that God gave them. Okay, thank you so much you both, um, Adam and Obaya. I believe that um, everyone who tuned in has learned a lot and I really want all of us to carry on the message, okay, and be examples ourselves. Let us stop this gender stereotyping and expecting women to behave in a certain way and expecting men to behave in a certain way. I saw um, a post last week and I, I really liked it. So I would like to read it out as we end. It says, our generation is so busy trying to prove that women can do everything men can do. Women are losing the unique qualities that set us apart. The God-given femininity and unique way a creator designed us. Women weren't created to do everything a man can do. Women were created to do everything a man can't do. The lioness does not try to be the lion. She embraces her role as the lioness. She is powerful, strong, and nurturing. She does not mistake her meekness for weakness. The world needs more kind, compassionate, humble, faithful, persevering, confident, fierce, pure, pure, bold, pure, and tender-hearted women. And so you be one of them. So um, I want to this entreat all the women here that let us own our femininity, okay? Um, yes, by all means, work hard. By all means, study hard to achieve whatever academic um, ladder that you want to achieve to break any um, glass ceiling or whatever but do not try to become a man or do not try to compete with any man. Likewise, the men do not feel the need to um, conform or behave in a particular way that society expects you to behave. Um, so on that note, we'd like to end the discussion. I see my own Mrs. Mimi L. Bernard here. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all the love and support. My own biological father is here. Daddy, thank you so much for everything. My darling husband, the executive producer, I'm grateful. A special shout out to Modern Ministry Woman. She is the face behind my flyers and everything. Thank you all so much and God richly bless you. Bye-bye, see you next week. Please invite more people. Thank you, Adam and Augusta, for this very important and insightful discussion. It was quite interesting. God bless you. Bye-bye.